Why did the adults let me do this to myself? I was just a kid. But the doctors all said it was the only way. I was afraid to say no. Very normal thing that happens again. The doctors saying it's the only way and people being afraid to say no. Yeah, dude, the doctors were like intimidating you. You were in there just for a regular checkup and then the, some fucking Italian mob men stepped in and blocked the door. Are you ready for your top surgery? No, 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 no. Are you ready for your top surgery? Okay, that's a nice uh, kneecap. It would be a shame if something happened to it on account of you not undergoing a lifetime of social transition that I don't benefit from. So I don't talk about trans men that much in this whole ongoing culture war battle. In large part, and this is to my detriment, you know, but... It's, it's in large part because so much of the discourse gets centered around trans women. And I think that's really unfair, you know? And if you go in trans spaces online, it's like all trans women. They're so annoying, you know? Women, am I right? <laughs> Fellas, right? Hey, 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 you know? Um, no, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an underserved element of discourse. But so often when people fearmonger about trans people, they fearmonger about trans women for a couple of reasons. A transphobe, of course, views a person as their birth sex, right? You know, like a transphobe will say a trans woman's a man, blah, 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 right? So from the perspective of the transphobe, a trans woman is more morally aberrant than a trans man because a trans woman is seen as appropriating and perverting the perceived inherent beauty of women. And a trans man is just kind of seen as like a, like a butch woman which, while not free from harassment, not even close, it definitely incurs not even a lesser degree of ire, but a different kind, you know? Now, we've talked about how TERFs feel about trans women a bunch on the stream, and I'm not going to reiterate today. <laughs> I haven't talked that much about how TERFs view trans men. Usually I summarize it the same way Natalie did, in her video on it by saying that they're, you know, lost sisters. And I do feel like that's a, a recurring theme. I saw this comic on Twitter uh, just the other day. It was DM'd to me by an oomphy. And um, it's, it's, a, it's an anti-trans male turf comic, you know? And I wanted to go over it because, again, I don't engage with this much. I don't. I'm not going to stop saying oomphy. I think it's very funny. I think it's a funny word, and I like using it. What does it mean? It's like one of my fr friends or followers or something. I don't know. It's oomphy. Just don't worry about it. <clears throat> Was it Jordan Peterson? Jordan Peterson and I are oomphies. Yeah, one of my followers, because we're mutuals. We follow each other. We're both each other's oomphies. And correct spelling is I-E, not Y. Anyway. You're not going to tell us that inclusive language during abortion discussions is bad optics, are you, people hands? No? Look, okay, here's the... Look, even I say pregnant persons, okay? Look, if somebody says abortion is a woman's rights issue, it is. I don't think it's appropriate to respond to that by going like, well, what about trans men, like in an antagonistic way? Because you're really... At that point, you're not opposing exclusionary language. You're opposing non-holistically inclusionary language. Does that make any sense? There's nothing wrong at all with using inclusive language on the whole abortion pregnancy bit. I do, however, think when people say stuff like, you know, women should be deciding on abortion, you know, you can add to that with like, well, trans men exist or whatever. I think it's a dumb point because I think everyone has a right to discuss any moral issue regardless of their personal demographics, but I'm just saying, don't, 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 don't light any fires over it. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. It's, you know, that's my opinion. Humbly. So anyway, here we have a comic. You can kind of get the theme right off the bat, huh? I don't talk that much about trans men because they don't get talked about that much. And a lot of my engagement with you know, culture war talking points is responding to other people's bad positions. Why are so many girls deciding they'd rather be boys? What a what a pointed question. Now I've already looked over the comic, by the way. If you're if you're expecting anything like 
horrifically, egregiously stupid, you're going to be disappointed. It's kind of a, a, a kind of a, a safe retelling of of turf perspective on the issue. But uh, you know, I, I think it's important to deal with these talking points, even when they're being presented in their most optically sanitized form. Not that bad, Tempest. Does that make any sense, you guys? Like, in order to deal with these points, you have to deal with them when they're being presented in what they perceive to be the most charitable form. So let's 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 move forward. Why are so many girls side red bullies? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. We'll find out. Could it be society's toxic expectation of women and girls? Cosmo, go on a diet, get this body, do whatever he wants in bed. Maybe then you'll be valued. So this is one of the ways that TERFs weaponize and misappropriate feminist critique in order to harm trans people. This is going to be a recurring theme for the entirety of this comic. The basic gist of it is, well, why do these trans men exist? It can't be because they're men, of course. They must be so fed up with sexism that they decided to be men. Which, um, a couple of pointers, just right off the bat, you know. First of all, the problem with this premise is that, much like many anti-trans arguments, it's unfalsifiable. If there are people saying they're trans, and you're like, well, the only reason you think you're trans is because of these omnipresent social forces, well, how do you, how do you argue against that? Can you prove that? No. But I can supply a good counter-argument. Sexism against women was worse 100 years ago than it is today. Yet there are far more trans men today than there were back then, at least perceptively. So it would seem like there's actually an inverse correlation between the oppression women experience and the prominence and existence of trans men. At the very least, you know, you would expect there to be some kind of flatlining correlation, something, but all available evidence points to the opposite of the implied problem in this comic. But let's continue. Maybe they internalize so many conflicting messages about how women are supposed to be that they'd rather opt out. Hate myself. I'm so ugly. I'd be better off as a man. Now, I'm going to be hundo with you guys, okay? I don't feel like it's normal to look at your body, recognize that you're not in compliance with traditional beauty standards, and then think at length, I wish I was the other sex, you know? If we're talking about transitioning here in body appearances, I'll use, you know, like sex rather than gender. But like, have you guys ever seen that like egg posting meme where people are like, you know, on 4chan, it's a green text post. And they're like, you know, I'm not trans or gay or whatever, but has anyone ever cried at night because, you know, they've like realized how ugly they are and how much more beautiful they would be if they were a woman and they wake up every morning and, and cry and want to kill themselves because they'll never have a woman's body? I'm cis, by the way. I'm not trans. Hasn't everyone done this? You know, y you all, you've all seen some variation of this post, right? You know what I'm talking about? Right? Yeah, the, the egg. Yeah, that's like half of 4chan right there. All I'm saying is, if a person's response to not adhering to traditional beauty standards is wanting to transition, I, I don't know. Uh, data pending on that being a thing. Anyway, the self-abasement continues. Real women have curves. Why are you so skinny? Eat a cheeseburger. Ah, yes, the very real problem of women transitioning into men because they felt bad that they were skinny. You know, skinny women get so much hate in today's world. How could they not look in the mirror and think, yes, I will upend my entire life and transition? <laughs> you know, many such cases. Not to say skinny women don't get shit, but again, like the idea that this translates into transitioning is just be hypersexual. Yes! Women are constantly being shamed for being chaste. That is completely true and not at all reflective of the biases of the people who made this comic. Not at all because TERFs are utterly sexless. That is very true. Women are always thinking, God, I get so much shit for, for, for not being <laughs> hypersexual. 
Don't get fat, be quiet, you should be more outgoing. You're so quiet, be pretty, be kind. Yeah, of course. Wait, hold on. Be kind. Wait, hold on. You should be kind. That's true. That, that part's fine. Anyway, here we go. I love this one. Could it be internalized homophobia? Get out of here, you ugly dyke. I'll kick your ass, you freak. Yes, again. A real thing that definitely happens. People who can't stand the social stigma of being homosexual, evidenced by wearing a hoodie and having shorter hair, but are willing to go through the stigma of transitioning. I got this from Deborah So as well. By the way, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Dr. Deborah So, who said to me that she had a study which indicated that there were lots of trans people who transitioned to avoid internalized homophobia, couldn't provide me the study on the spot. That's fair. I asked her in DMs afterwards for the study. She ignored me. I asked her in public in response to one of her tweets later for the study. She ignored me. There's no study. The I no, that's re that's real, by the way. The idea that people would transition to avoid homophobia is such an on-the-face-of-it, ludicrously stupid position that a only a genuine fucking moron could possibly... <laughs> okay, whatever. Could it be they feel safer in the world being perceived as male? I have to admit I'm a little bit curious about what this panel is meant to represent. Do we have so I think this is the same trans guy in in the in the in the transitional literally in the transitional process of 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 being socially transitioning as a man. And then you've two I guess these are meant to be like guys that would otherwise catcall or harass or something. This person looks like a potato and this person just looks angry. I I again, you know, very off-putting vibes. From these two. Now, there is a legitimate argument to be to be had here. It is generally a lot safer to walk around being perceived as male than being perceived as female. That's that's true. However, I don't think people transition over this. <laughs> you know? Like, trans people have all these explanations for why they feel the way they do, and TERFs will just ignore all of them and go like, oh, it must be because of the sexism you faced. Do you remember J.K. Rowling doing the same thing? J.K. Rowling did the same thing in her big creepy manifesto, where she was like, oh, when I was young, I felt I liked wearing dark clothing. Maybe I would have transitioned back then, too. No, you wouldn't have, or if you would have, then you still can. <laughs> That's not how it works. That was lit literally in her manifesto, like this... This, oh, trans men are angsty because of sexism. Well, I faced sexism, you know? I've worn eyeliner. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can save him. Transitioning can still save him. Hold on. Could it be the most books and movies have a male hero and the girls only play supporting roles? I want to be the main character. Again, legitimate feminist critique of society, but... Do people transition over this? Do, do, do people, you know, like you could do this entire comic over again, except delegitimizing homosexuality. You realize that, right? You know, why, why do so many young men decide to be gay? Is it because they're told that, um, you know, uh, it's it's patriarchal to want a traditional family. You know, you could do this with anything. Any social, like, construct you don't like, you can just invent a bunch of reasons. But what this really is is projection, isn't it? The turf who made this comic is projecting their angst onto it and assuming all trans men must feel the same way they do. And their decision to transition must be a product of them inappropriately responding to the same to the same stimuli, to the same pre-existing and agreed upon sexism. There's no evidence for this. Could it be because they want to be taken seriously? Hey dad, I learned a science fact in school today. Wow, James, I'm so impressed. Everyone always listens to James, but I'm smart too. And we see the pattern here, of course. The idea that a person would transition because they're sick of not being listened to. 
Yes, trans people are... The funny thing is here is that one of the arguments being made in favor of why a girl might transition into a guy is because they want to be listened to, but this comic is a testament to TERFs not listening to trans men explain why they're trans. Like, oh yeah, b you'll grow up and transition into a guy and be ignored just as much, you know? Phenomenal. Hi, Dad. I learned that uh, trans men are only trans men because they are responding poorly to sexism and it's not real. Wow, James, I'm so impressed. Everyone always listens to James, but yeah, like you could <laughs> Could it be from all the regressive stereotypes they're taught in school? Gender spectrum, boys, girls, trucks, dirt, girls, dolls, pretty glitter. Right, again, you know, social standards, blah, 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 right. Could it have any, oh here, this is a spicy one. Could it have anything to do with social media influencers presenting transition as a cure for all kinds of unhappiness? Instagram. I'm so happy. I'm finally my authentic self. 10k likes. And the thing that I really appreciate about this is that there's nothing in the comic to indicate that the person on Instagram is incorrect. So it really just makes the person who made this comic look like a hater. Could it, could it be that they're seeing all these other like happy people being happy doing the thing that they did to be happy after facing the same feelings that the unhappy person did? Maybe. Well, I don't know, you're kind of making it look <laughs> look pretty pretty reasonable, actually. Look at how happy they look. They've got got a big smile. Yeah, who who wouldn't want a smile that big, huh? I like this one too. Could it be because mommy or daddy wants attention too? And here we have an overlap with the far right. Well, not the only one, of course. I made a million dollars putting my trans kid on TV because I'm the best mom ever. Come to my book signing, watch my TED talk. I love money. I mean, I love my kids so much. And um, this would be really cool and incisive if this ever happened. <laughs> what are we... Like, we're just making... We're just completely constructing shit in our mind right now. Like, the far right is obsessed with this image of, like, the greedy, woke parent who, like, grifts by forcing their kid into a bunch of bad shit to make money off of it. But the funny thing is, the only evidence we have of people who involve themselves in this discourse for money are the anti-trans people, you know? Like, basically every anti-trans, uh, like, effort or individual is, is, like, ruthlessly weaponizes and mischaracterizes these situations for money. Also, the detransitioning crowd, you know? If you want to detransition, that's fine. But there are a lot of people who detransition and then they make it their life's mission to make like $8 billion being like a, a cuck for conservative business interests. And often their detransitioning shit is kind of phony too. It reminds me a lot of Blair White going on um, Joe Rogan. To, or sorry, no, Blair White tweeting that it's crazy how kids are deciding their gender at five when in an earlier Joe Rogan podcast, Blair White said, yeah, I've known I was a girl since I was five. That's not a joke. That is a direct and explicit... Blair White has always tried to validate her identity by saying she knew from a really early age, but now, because the fear of groomer parents forcing their kids to transition, as though that was a real thing, um, is, is like the mainstream talking point, now she has to pretend that's not the case. Um, she also said 20-year-olds shouldn't transition when that's when she started, Lamau. Yeah, again, Blair White only really cares about herself, and she's probably, like, suicidally depressed over her identity to existence. I refuse to believe anyone can be like that without hating themselves, you know? Like, I feel like, the, like, you know the, you know the thing with Dave Rubin, where, like, Ben Shapiro went to, like, went to his face, was like, yeah, I wouldn't attend your wedding, or whatever? Like, Blair White's every day is that, you know what I mean? Like, they're, like, she's at back there at, like, CPAC or whatever. Conservatives are putting out lit cigarettes on her face, like, calling her a man. And she's like, mm -hmm. okay. And then she goes home and cries. You know, whatever. Have fun. You know, you hate on Blair White all you want, but you gotta give her credit for one thing. She's more miserable than any trans kid she's ever uh, 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 driven to hate themselves. Really leading the pack there. So anyway, here we have this fake thing. And then we, we've got this classic one. Or because greedy doctors and pharmaceutical companies see a lifelong income stream from children who head down this path. The doctor's thinking about money, 
But what they're saying is, you say you started feeling like a boy last week. We better get you on testosterone right away. Yes, this is how the medical gatekeeping system works in uh in 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 the United States and in England. You can just uh, yes, if only. The funny thing is, if you want a testosterone diagnosis like right away, you just have to be a cis guy. Like, just go to a doctor and be like, uh, "Dude, my like shit's feeling funny. I don't know. I I'm feeling like I'm feeling like kind of down. Can you just can you just like fucking roid me up?" They're like, "Yeah, here you go. Be, be careful. <laughs> I need more energy. Can you yeah? Can you can you just inject this directly into my asshole? Just sign this informed consent uh, release form that releases me from any future liability. I really like this quote unquote." informed consent form like like the doctors are <laughs> like can you just sign this paper with my pen like they're making shit sound sinister with the quotes you know could it be normal teen angst exploited by adult groomers and i like this one too because once again we have a really 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 like um incisive title being given to a panel in which nothing wrong is happening. If you think you might be trans, you probably are. Which, yeah, I mean, thinking you're trans isn't a normal thing that people think. I have never in my life for a moment thought that I was trans. Not even what, you know, I just wake up and sometimes, you know, it's it's never gone beyond like, having tits that are big and soft must be nice chin rests when you're sitting at a desk. Everyone's thought that. Come on. Apart from that, though, it just hasn't crossed my mind. You haven't? Well, every, every, everyone's, you know, thought about having big soft milkies, but just more in a sort of convenient sense. You know, TTTT is going to use this clip. Everyone wants to make me trans. They're not going to get me. You're not going to get me. What if I was trans? What if I'm trans, uh, a trans guy? You know, they'll clock me when I'm dead. You can you can dig my body up and, and look at my skeleton. They'll be like, oh, what wide hip? I actually do have really wide hips, um, but I also have a fat cock. So sorry, no dice. Uh, anyway, I, I hope we can all agree. Nothing wrong is happening in this comic panel. Like the title, the, the caption, it's so, you know, alarmist, exploited by adult groomers. And like, is grooming taking place here? Well, no. No, we're in this panel. Exploiting? What, what exploitation is taking place? How does the person in the computer benefit at all from this little bit of advice? Also, what here indicates they're in, like an adult? You know, as far as I can tell, left Twitter is all like 16-year-old trans cat girls. So, uh, you know, at least they're insufferable enough to be. But all we really see here is a generally true bit of info being delivered over the computer. Could it be a form of magical thinking? Escapism? Intense curiosity? Intense curiosity. <laughs> what, what is this? The magical wizard boy? Magic spells? Wait, is this a, are we doing a Harry Potter bit here? I wonder what it'd be like to live as a boy. How can I not want to find out now that it's an option? Totally normal thoughts and feelings, by the way. Very normal. How can I not medically and socially transition now that it's possible to? You're completely right. Yes, this is completely normal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the mere existence of, 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 of the, the ability the, to, to cut tits off is all I need to just undergo a massive life change, you know? Could it be loneliness, desire to belong to a community, to not be classified cishet scum? <laughs> Mad. This person got called a sissy back in 2019, the person who made this comic, and uh, they've never let it go. I don't fit in with the normal people. Why would I want to anyway? Why be another boring, privileged cis girl? <laughs> <laughs> the girls are transitioning because they've checked their privilege. My mom is an asshole, and here's the mom saying no. Here's some people saying, join our glitter family. Okay. I'm your mom now. Do whatever you want. Is this meant to be like that lives from TikTok teacher? Okay. Look at all the detransitioner. Oh, wait, now we're being appealed to directly. 
Look at all the detransitioners. There are more every day on YouTube and Dtrans Reddit. Listen to them. This is how you should make life decisions, by the way, okay? Deliberately seek out, at the behest of a webcomic, specific groups of YouTubers and Redditors, and then uncritically believe everything they say. You know, this is how you do statistics. Why did the adults let me do this to myself? I was just a kid. But the doctors all said it was the only way. I was afraid to say no. Very normal thing that happens again. The doctors saying it's the only way and people being afraid to say no. Yeah, dude, the doctors were like intimidating you. You were in there just for a regular checkup and then the, some fucking Italian mob men, uh, 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 you know, stepped in and blocked the door. Are you, are you ready for your top surgery? No, 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 no. Are you ready for your top surgery? Okay. You know, there's like a yeah, gabagool, a guy with like a baseball bat with some nails sticking out of it, you know? Hey, I'm transitioning here. <laughs> yeah. It w that's, a, that's a nice uh, kneecap. It would be a shame if something happened to it uh, on account of you not undergoing a lifetime of uh, social uh, transition that I don't benefit from in any way. <laughs> Ravioli. Ah, uh, now we have all these. Uh, oh, opening with Fourth Wave Now, which is one of the websites that was uh, that w was used to pull parents to for that awful um, rapid onset gender dysphoria. Remember when they were like, "I'm going to do a study about why trans people transition." Asks the transphobic parents pulled from websites that are anti-trans. Documentaries available on YouTube. Dysphoric, fleeing womanhood like a house on fire, directed by Vaishnavi Sundar. Watch it. I don't want to... Hold on. Dysphoric, fleeing womanhood, house on fire. Wow, only 18 typos. Wow, a four-part documentary. And the first part is 34 minutes. This is two hours. Yeah, folks, I'm not watching this. 10 minutes, please. I'll give you one minute, but this might be content ID. Oh he my God. Is it all animated? Oh no, only a bit. Me a bunch of articles he carefully clipped out from newspapers over many days. Uh. All of them were about rapes and male sexual violence committed against women and girls in my country. Uh. He didn't show them to me to encourage or empower me to face the harsh reality of women in India. Instead, he told me that if I wasn't careful enough, something similar would happen to me too. Okay. I mean, it's awful, of At 35, course. I cringe when I recollect this memory. Yet my grandfather and my whole family claim to have had my best interests in mind. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. I just, I, I can't watch the whole thing. I just need to know. ...of my breasts and transition into a man to save myself. Okay, I think we found the relevant part sported short hair and loathed wearing dresses because it brought attention to my womanhood. A pair of jeans, a baggy t-shirt, sports bra and a hat would summarize my wardrobe on most days. Knowing fully well that I had the transphobic uh, tomboy GF. What do you think, lads? Privileges that many of my sisters didn't. I keep thinking to myself more than two decades later. Would I have opted to get rid of my breasts and transition into a man to save- Ah, so they didn't even transition. It's not, so this is just another one of those, well, I used to wear baggy t-shirts when I was a kid, so I'm pretty sure that I would have undergone a lifetime of, of living as a man. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> yes. Dude, they do this so often. All these TERFs, they're like, well, when I, when I was young, I had my short hair once, so I'm positive that I would have had a, like, surgeries. Yes. And, which means they've had no experience whatsoever with any of the elements of, like, medical gatekeeping that are opposed, uh, that imposed in front of trans people, you know? Like, they just make it up. Like, they, they have no experience with any of it. Like, they, they're just like, well, from what I've heard, just any old kid can trans these days. And they're just doing it if you got short hair. So and it's just like, it's nothing. Four, four parts of this. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, yeah. We had um, a trans Deuterino win in um, Bong Bong Land.
So that's nice. Bong da dong land. Bing ba da bong ga dong ga da ba da bing bing dum ba bum ba bum. In what land? Britbong. What is bong bong land? Britbong. Well, anyway, I think we get the gist. Anyway, I think you can tell, and I think this reaffirms what I've said before, but the attitude towards trans men from TERFs, broadly, is one more of like um, co contemptible patronization, right? Like, they're so patronizing, you know. With trans women, they're like, you are literally appropriating femininity. You are going to kill us. You, you want to rape us. You want to rape us. No, I don't have any statistics proving that that happens at all. No, you know. But with trans men, it's more like, when I was 11 years old, I once wore a baseball cap. If I was 11 today in that same cap, would I spend $60,000 on associated transition surgeries? You know? And yeah, yeah, the loss is shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's very, very different vibes. It's also, by the way, unironically misogynistic. They view trans men as, as women, of course. And according to them, women are really fucking stupid. At least they portray trans women as, like, c conniving demons and sexual predators. At least there's some kind of malicious, devilish intent assigned there. But for the, for the trans men, it's just like, yeah, I guess they're just so weak and stupid that experiencing sexism made them want to just, like, accidentally upend everything in their life. Okay. Great attitude towards who you perceive to be women there, I guess. Yeah, very infantilizing, yeah. Yeah, Tempest, you got your your beef. No, NB Champ, don't don't look for logic in their arguments. You'll find none. Just the only reason we go over stuff like this is because it's important to understand, to laugh at, um, and also to know how to make fun of them. Which in the case of of, of TERFs in particular, I do feel like I feel like there's a particular rhetorical effectiveness to doing that, you know. Oh, when I was twelve, I once chewed baseball gum. And I, and I skipped in the dirt, and if I was alive today, I'm positive I would have had them shoot me full of testosterone the next morning. You know, or some shit like that. I once burped in front of my mom if I was alive today. You know, you know what I mean. You, 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 if I was alive today. Hey, I wish, I wish TERFs could say, from hell, I wish I was alive today. Hey, you got, you got, get, get me fellas, cause they suck. Hey.